In this video, I'll show you how to bring back to life an old black and white negative with the help of Photoshop CS6. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey, where you'll learn how to take stunning photos and then polish them in post-production. Here's your host, Gavin Hoey. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that really does have everything for us photographers. Now today, I'm gonna to do a little bit of what's called reanimation. What's reanimation? Well, I'm gonna take a 50-year-old negative, I'm gonna turn it into a digital positive, and then we're gonna use Photoshop CS6 to animate this and give it a real 3D feel. Now the equipment we're going to use is actually pretty straightforward and you may have some of it already. For example, this. This is my Lastalite Easy Box. It's a 24 inch soft box that I absolutely love. It is portable. It folds down really, really small. It is beautiful, soft, even lighting. Very useful for portraits as well as reanimation work. And of course it works with your speed light or flash gun, meaning you don't need expensive lights behind it. You can use the gear you've already got. So my plan is this, I'm gonna get my negative and put it somewhere in the middle of the softbox. Now I could tape it directly onto the surface of the softbox, but then you'd see all the texture of the softbox material. So I need to bring it slightly away so we don't get that in shot. Now to do it, I'm gonna use a couple of studio clamps. And although they're studio clamps, really every photographer should have these, these are so useful. Uh, this is an A-clamp, as you can tell by the name. In fact, it's two A-clamps joined together with a bit of gaffer tape. Always useful stuff to have in the studio. And I'm gonna use this just to hook onto the top of the easy box, like that. And that's just gonna bring my negative, well, I can attach it to the clamp a little lower down. There's one other clamp that I find really useful for this sort of work. Frankly, I find it useful for all sorts of things. It's this double clip. Okay, so it's not as strong as an A clamp. It's really used for holding bits of card or for gels, that kind of thing. But because it has two little sort of bulldog clips with a, a sort of a C in between, um, you can use it to angle and adjust and position it wherever you like. So let's just add that in like that. And that's gonna bring my, my little negative roughly into the middle of the softbox. Should get nice even illumination across the negative that way and give me the best photo. Speaking of photos, I think we should set up a camera. Right, okay, so I'm gonna use my Canon 60D once again for this shoot. Now you've seen me use this before. If you saw the self-portrait video that we did a little while back, this is the same camera I used and the reason I'm using it today is for the same reason. The little pop-up flash on the top here is brilliant on the Canon 60D. It acts as a master and that means it can control the 580 EX Mark II around the back of the softbox, which is set to slave, set to ETTL. Everything can be controlled from here from the camera so I don't have to keep wandering around the back and changing any settings. Of course, Nikon users, you're gonna find something similar on your camera systems called CLS. Other camera manufacturers have again, similar ideas with their cameras. So there's actually there's one other good reason why I like using the 60D for this work, and it's because I can use a great lens. No, not my Canon 24-105, that really is a great lens, but for this job, it's the wrong lens. I need a macro lens, because we're gonna photograph this little negative, it's only two inches across, and I need to fill the frame. And a macro lens means I can go really, really close. How close? Let's just bring it in. Well, actually, I was about right, there we go, there. That fills the frame with my image, and the macro lens makes that possible. It's also desperately sharp. It's a very good quality lens. This is the Canon 60 millimeter lens, but it's an EFS lens. And that means it's only compatible with the crop sensor camera, hence the 60D. Right, so let's talk about camera settings. I'm gonna be working in full manual because we're on flash and I'm gonna work at the camera's flash sync speed. So that is one two hundredth of a second. Because we're focused so close, the depth of field is gonna be minuscule, so we'll be on F16. Now you're probably thinking, why do you have to worry about depth of field when you're photographing a flat negative film? Well, although it is flat, if you actually look really closely, it's, it's actually slightly curved 
and also it's possibly not perfectly square onto the camera. So F16 gives me just enough depth of field to cater for those slight problems. Finally, the ISO, well, the ISO, nice and simple, whatever the lowest ISO is, that's what I'm gonna use. So everything's in place. All I need to do is take a photo. And there you go, there it is. There's my photograph, there's my negative turned into a digital image. It's worth checking the histogram because looking at a negative image can really throw you out. It's hard to work out whether it's too bright or too dark, but that looks absolutely fine. Now, once this picture has been turned back into a positive, we could do something like print it out via Adorama Pix, make a fantastic picture to hang on the wall. But what I'm gonna do is bring it into Photoshop CS6, and then we're gonna reanimate it using its video features. And we're gonna do that right now. So with my raw file here in MiniBridge, I'm just gonna bring that into Photoshop and that opens it into Camera Raw. And first thing I need to do really is get rid of the negative and make it a positive. And here in Raw, I simply do that by going to the Tone Curve and making sure I'm on the Point Tone Curve. I can drag the point on the bottom left up to the top left and the top right down to the bottom right. That inverts the tones in my picture, and for the first time in nearly 50 years, there's the picture revealed as a positive. Now, the downside with this is everything is now reversed inside of your sliders. So, for example, if you increase the exposure to make your picture brighter, you actually decrease your exposure. And this takes a little bit of getting used to. Things like shadows and highlights are reversed, and blacks are white and whites are black, which is important because when we look at the histogram, it's pretty flat at both ends of the curve there. So let's take the whites, which is actually the blacks. Let's decrease. Uh, well, no, let's increase, which will bring the, the blacks down, and then we'll do the same with the blacks, which is actually the whites. Yeah, this really will make your head completely spin, but you'll get the idea very quickly when things don't quite go to plan. Things like saturation, fortunately, that still works in the way it's meant to, as does clarity, thank goodness for that. I can put a bit of clarity in there, which adds a bit of contrast, and of course add a bit of contrast and tweak the exposure like so. So that is my uh, image returned from a negative into a positive. We'll open this up, we'll leave camera roll behind and return to Photoshop. Now at this point, if you're gonna send this away to say Adorama Pix and make a print, you're done, you can stop. For me, I wanna make this into a more animated video. And to do that, I need to do a little bit of work. First thing I need to do is come to the layer here, the background layer with the padlock. We must get rid of the padlock. So I'm gonna click on the padlock and drop it down into the bin and it's renamed it to layer zero, padlock gone. Don't miss that step out because it will come back and bite you later on if you do. And then we need to select what would be called the foreground and isolate it from the background. Now in this case, I think it's gonna be the rock, it's gonna be the, the two people and we're gonna lose everything else behind. So. There are many selection tools you can use and on a black and white image with no color for Photoshop to work on, the normal to tools may not do what you want. For example, the quick selection here is doing a reasonably good job, but it's not getting, it's, it's, it's getting a little bit too much here and there. So you might find yourself just having to, to drop in and use a few more hand-based tools. Let's take that out from the selection, holding the Alt or the Option key just to make that a negative selection area like that. Okay, so it's missed a large chunk out there. We'll see if we can get this by carefully nudging up to the edge. Now it really wants to snap over, as you can see. And this is where having just a black and white image can really give you problems. And if it does, simply swap to something like the freehand lasso tool and we'll freehand add that in. Now I'm just gonna spend a moment or two just going around here and tidying up these selections, but using the power of video, it will take no time at all for you, so come back and join me in just a second. Okay, so I'm nearly done. Just this last little bit to do, which is the pipe. Uh, this dashing chap is actually my granddad, so we'll spend a little bit of time getting his pipe because that's one of his sort of trademark things. And the lady with him is actually my auntie, so this is a real family photograph. There we go, that looks pretty good and nice and tidy. Okay, so there is my selection done. Now all I need to do is to cut them out and pop them on their own layer. So let's go to Edit and Cut, and then Edit and Paste, and we'll kind of just drag them back down just so they kind of snap into place there. Then I can switch that layer off. I don't need it anymore, it's done its job, 
and I'll select the background layer, which is now layer zero. I'm going to hold the control key or the command key, click on that layer to make a selection and select inverse to get that negative area that we cut out. I'll also go up to select and modify and I'll choose to expand it by three pixels. Then I need to fill this in because we're going to animate this. We're going to move the two layers independently. And if I have a checkerboard pattern, you'd notice when I move the layer. So let's go to edit, fill, and we'll choose content aware. Now, this isn't going to look good. So don't panic. This, this looks absolutely dreadful. All we need is just the edges to be covered up because we're going to move the two layers to give a 3D effect at slightly different speeds and select and deselect and all we need is the the main bits covered up so anything like this area here we'll need to fine tune that so let's get the spot healing tool and we'll just quickly run that around there and we'll just tidy those areas away um, but everything that looks completely mad down here that's absolutely fine not worried about that at all that's all going to be covered up and you'll never see it okay so we've Remove them from the background. We've put them on separate layers. Now we can start animating. Now to go to animation, now it's normally down the bottom here with mini bridge. Timeline is what you're looking for. If you can't see timeline, go to window and go down to timeline. Again, this is a Photoshop CS6 feature and CS6 has many new features. But if you're into video in any way, shape or form, then CS6 huge bonus is that now video is available in all versions of CS6, not just extended. And the tools that they've bought into CS6 have been lifted from its bigger brother, Premiere. OK, now all I need to do is create video timeline. OK, that's what I'm going to click. If you see frame animation, just drop the list down and change it to timeline. That should give you two tracks, as it were, two different layers, which is what we have up here. Remember, if you didn't unlock the background layer, then you would only see one track here. So that's, that's why that was so important right at the beginning. Now, I'm going to click on the top layer, which is the, uh, well, my auntie and my granddad. And I'm going to click the little arrow right at the end of the timeline. And from that, I'm going to choose to pan and zoom. And then I'm going to click on the second layer, layer zero, and I'm going to do the end of that timeline arrow, and I'm just going to choose pan. So pan only on the bottom layer, pan and zoom on the top layer. And then hit the play button or press the space bar, and off it goes. Now, this will take a, a little while to render. So depending on your computer, you may see this run smoothly the first time. It may go quite jerky the first time. If it does, just play it again. And the second time, it will be as smooth as you like. That's just how Photoshop works with video. All you need to do now is to get that out as a video. So let's just slide that up and click on this drop down menu. And I can choose render video. And from the video rendering, I'm going to choose H264. 25 frames a second, 1080p, or you can choose any of the other presets that's built in and just click render and away it goes, turning your still image into a reanimated video. Everything I've shown you in this video, you can get from Adorama. Have a look at the description below for links to their site. And don't forget, if you want to see more videos like this, you need to click on the subscribe button and uh, you'll get plenty more videos. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching. Oh, that's heavy. Take and Make Great Photos is brought to you by Adorama, the place for everything photography. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 8 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.